Hey guys, thanks for watching, thanks for coming back, tuning in, whatever. Um, I'm a little frustrated right now. I had a whole video or, or series of stuff that I was putting together that I shot yesterday and uh, something, because I'm still, I'm getting used to using that selfie stick so that I can have the tripod so that you can actually watch what I'm doing instead of just looking, or you can see me doing things instead of just looking at the ground. Um, but for some reason, I guess it goes to sleep or something, and when it does that, it shuts my video off because it's a selfie stick that you hook up through Bluetooth. So I think what I'm going to have to try to do is uh, not actually hook it up and just use the actual stick and the tripod. Um, so yeah, frustrated because I had a whole video. I was I was running it through the editor and um, you know doing the transitions and all that sort of stuff. And I saw I realized watching some of it back that it cut off a good portion of what I had done. So. Yeah, technology, man, it just really, it can really get frustrating. I sound like an old person when I say that, but it is what it is. Anyway, so what I decided to do is just erase all of that, and we'll shoot a video real quick, just chatting about some things. Um, you know, I'd love in the future to have moments where we could do a live video and some people sit and chat with me about what's going on in their their gardens, what's going on in their parts of the world, because I'm sure not everybody's going to be from here. I know I have, uh, I have a, a guy who I've known through social media, and um, he follows me on here that is from um, Australia, and it's interesting to hear kind of his perspective on what he's doing over there, because, uh, you know, it's... We have similarities between Australia and Florida. Um, we have a lot of differences as far as the climate goes and the, the uh, what we can grow and stuff like that. There are a lot of good uh, permaculturists that come from Australia, um, and so they they definitely know what they're doing. Um, but. Yeah, so I'd love to have the, the live chat in the future to where we can, you know, just kind of converse and there may be topics that I, you know, I can do in the future and stuff. And th this is, I would need more followers, you know, this is down the line. I'm not just going to sit and, um, I'm not just going to sit and do that with one person necessarily, but, um. Anyway, I wanted to shoot something talking about a video that I had seen. Uh, sorry, a video that I had watched, and this was this was a while back ago. Everybody knows that I follow David the Good on here, David Goodman, um, and he posted a video, and I kind of wanted to give a reaction to it. And I guess a reaction to it, just because I watched it and now I'm reacting to it. So reaction. But uh, he had a video called Better Gardening Through Experimentation, and it's kind of a short, um, almost like a short film type thing. It, it's not one of his short uh, update videos, it's not one of his live stream videos, or as he calls them, the good streams. Um, it was kind of like a short production, because he was going through um, various different, different aspects and I watched it and it really did change kind of my, again, one of the things that he's done really changed the outlook of my gardening. You know, I think one of the things that gardeners are so afraid of is failure. You know, we're so afraid to plant something and it dies or plant something and it never grows. Um, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if the pests come? What if the, it gets powdery mildew? What if it gets root rot? What if it gets, you know, all the various things that can happen. Um, and so, yeah, those things are, are legitimate concerns because 
things that are going to happen. Um, but I think what happens is it paralyzes gardeners into not trying things. I, I think that's one of the things that actually people give up gardening or don't even start because of that sort of mentality. Well, you know, everything I've tried to plant before just died and didn't work, so I'm just going to give it up. You know, I'm just, I don't have a green thumb. I can't garden. I'll just, you know, let someone else do that. And that's your prerogative. But I would challenge you to, one, simply try again. And uh, two, to go watch that video. And three, to experiment. Try it. And that is a challenge. My, my third point there is a challenge to veteran gardeners and to gardeners, you know, novice gardeners, people who are scared of gardening, people, you know, who have, you know, have gardening down pat, whatever, it doesn't matter, what, whatever you're, wherever you are on the gardening spectrum, I challenge you with that third point, as David somewhat did in his video, I think the video kind of issues that challenge, whether he was issuing a challenge or not, it kind of puts it out there to just try stuff, you know, try it. If there are, you don't, you never know, you just never know if something will work for you unless you try it, and who cares if it fails? And I think one of the things that, especially with the idea of homesteading and preparing and things like that, people, you know, I can't fail because if I fail, I won't have anything and I'll be, you know, stuck in the zombie apocalypse with no, uh, you know, I won't have any food and all this other stuff, and, you know, I'll be left to fend for myself, that sort of thing. And to a degree, I understand that, because the whole idea behind homesteading and preparing is having backups that can, you know, let's say, you know, here in Florida, we're, we have we have a lot of hurricanes, um, because we're literally sticking out into the ocean. Um, so, it's good to have preparations to where if a hurricane does come, knock your power out, you know, you've got food you can eat that doesn't require electricity, um, and you got water. There's, you know, I've done a video about this before, and there are a bunch of different things that we could discuss as far as preparing, and that's just for hurricanes, that's not talking about anything else. Um, it's hard for me to speak on other, on, on certain natural disasters because we don't deal with them here, but, um, so yeah, I do understand that, that, that feeling of, oh man, you know, I can't afford for something to fail because then I'm, what if this happens, what if, you know, everything I have fails and I don't have anything and the hurricane comes and I don't have power and I'm, you know, but I think that only goes so far and I think we get to where we pressure ourselves unnecessarily into thinking that, you know, I have to succeed. Everything I stick in the ground has to succeed. If it doesn't, then I am a failure. No, no, that, that, that's not even commercial farmers commercial agriculture, whatever you want to call it, even they have failures some years. They have better crops than others, you know, that it doesn't. Just because you, you may know what you're doing and because you've put something in the ground and because you've watered it and because you've fertilized it and because you've done this, that, and the other to it, does not mean that it's going to work 100% of the time, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know, no questions asked. That doesn't mean that at all. Um, and it is frustrating. It's frustrating when you feel like I've done this before, it worked, and I'm doing it again, it's not working this time. What is the problem? It could be a menagerie of problems. You don't know. A menagerie of things. So, how do you, com how do you combat that? Well, you could try to figure out, okay, should, like I've always recommended, soil samples, get to know your, uh, climate, you know, get to know what grows well here, and what is the most 
consistent, you know, what you can rely on the most and, and stick with those things. But I think another important thing is to experiment. Now, that being said, I don't recommend going out and planting an entire garden of experimental stuff. I don't recommend that at all because if you do that, you have a good chance of every single last thing that you plant failing. So what I do recommend, and I believe, it's been a while since I've watched that video, I think that David has talked about that in the video and he's talked about it in some of his books. Um, plant the stuff that you know is going to, you know, at least some stuff. Plant at least some stuff that you know is going to grow. You know that you will at least get some kind of crop out. For example, here in Florida, in the zone that I'm in, I'm in zone 9B, I can grow okra, no problem. I can grow um, as asparagus beans, snake beans, yard long beans, all that, no problem. I can grow Seminole pumpkin, no problem. Um, I can grow yams, no problem. I can grow cassava, no problem. Um, longevity spinach without an issue on and on and on so you'll find um, apparently I can grow uh, yellow pear tomatoes no problem because I still I just planted this was in that video I just planted another sprout and I, I had showed it before and it was growing in my wicking bed and I had let it get big enough and I just planted it out yesterday and it looks right now it's looking good it took the uh, transplant very nicely, um, so hopefully that one will start up. But I'm, I, what I'm, what I'm aiming for with my other yellow pear tomato is to see if I can get it to last a year. It's still going. Some of it look, some of it looks like it's going to die, but then there are just offshoots going everywhere. So, and it's still producing tomatoes. So, you know, I, I'm hoping I can get it to go a year. That would just, I don't know, something about that would be so cool to me. Like, I planted this yellow pear tomato last fall, and in fall of 2020, and in the fall of 2021, it's still growing, still producing tomatoes. Anyways, I'm sorry I didn't sidetrack, but anyways. Um, but find the things that do grow here, and that don't take a lot of effort, that tend to, tend to like your area, your soil, all that sort of stuff, and plant those. Don't don't give up on those, <laughs> but set aside some space in your garden to experiment. Like with one of the things that I'm somewhat experimenting with right now is cucumber. I've tried cucumber various times. Um, before I went into organic gardening, I successfully grew cucumbers, but you know I was spraying them with all sorts of stuff. I wasn't using pesticides, but I was spraying them with the um, blue water miracle grow, the blue crystals. So, I mean, I could think of worse things, but nevertheless, it wasn't organic. And I grew, and it was in a raised bed, and I grew cucumbers. Um, ever since then, I've never been able to grow cucumbers. And, but I still try. I, I still, I don't try for the big you know, slicing cucumbers because they just don't do very well here. The, the climate is too harsh, the heat and everything. Um, plus the, the uh, we've got pests here that are more or less only attack cucurbits and stuff like that. Um, then you've got the vine borers, which are one of my worst enemies. But uh, you can find other types like the Mexican sour gherkin the cucumelon tends to grow pretty well here I think 9b you can do sort of the little pippling cucumbers they may work better but try it you know always try it there's nothing you never know you might find a variety of of anything I mean carrots cucumbers squash who knows, eggplant, whatever. You could find a variety of something that you really would like to grow and find that 
you have just the right microclimate in your yard or in a spot in your yard or in the corner of your bed where that will grow. And you now have cucumbers or you now have squash, you now have eggplant, you now have whatever it is that you want to grow. So, go watch that video. I'll put a link in the description. Um, you need to watch that video because it, it, it's just, I couldn't, you know, obviously David's a way better gardener than me. Um, but I couldn't say anything, I couldn't say it better. Don't be afraid of crops failing. Don't be afraid of things you plant failing. Plant stuff that you know is going to do well. But even if that doesn't do well, like for example right now, I planted black beans this year and I've grown black beans before and they did really well. They're not doing as well. It seems like possibly the vine borers have gotten to them because they're starting to turn yellow at the base and I'm, I'm just monitoring them to see if it starts to work its way up because that's what's happened to me before when I've tried to grow whole beans and, and peas and stuff like that. They grow really well. They, they go, you know, they start to climb, they start to flower, they start to produce. Then, all of a sudden, the bottom and the bottom leaves turn yellow and start to die. And it just slowly works its way up the plant. And that is usually a sign of a vine borer or some sort of pest. Um, because the vine borer larva will get into the base of the uh, vine right down by the ground and literally bore it will bore its way in the vine and it will basically separate the vine from the roots and so it will die from the bottom up so that may be going on with black beans before I have successfully grown black beans before I have beans growing right now so even if the borers do get to them, um, you know, even if the vine borers do get to it, I will still have beans. I'll probably save them to use as seed because I don't have that many. But, you know, it's still frustrating. It's like, I know this works here, but now this, this pest has gotten to it. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to try it again. That doesn't mean, you know, if my black beans died, and I could tell they're dying, and then something's happened to them, they're going to die, I might just pull them up and go ahead and throw in some yard-long beans, because, yeah, it's late in the season. You know, really, I shouldn't be planting anything, because it's, it's late. It's hot now. It's getting close to summer. You know, it's, it's really late to be doing anything. But, I know that the yard-long beans don't tend to care about that. So I might be able to stick some in even this late and still get a late crop of it. Um, so there's always things, you know, that didn't work this time. I'll try it again next time. Tweak some things. That sort of, that sort of, have that mindset. If you go at it with the mindset of, I'm going to plant this. Oh no, it failed. You know, I can't ever grow this here. I mean, there's going to be things that you just can't grow here. Like... I cannot get beefsteak tomatoes, the large tomatoes, slicing tomatoes to grow here. I just can't do it. So I've refocused to other things like the yellow pear tomatoes because I know I can grow yellow pear tomatoes. Um, I'm about to get some Everglades tomato seeds and I'm going to give those a try again. I know I can grow grape tomatoes. I know I can grow cherry tomatoes. So I just refocus. So that's one way to handle it. Another way to handle it is just don't worry about it. You could have, this could have just been a bad year, bad spot, who knows what. The bugs got to it this time, they didn't before, they might not next year. Try it again. Um, you know, don't, don't let, you know, and, you know, please don't let it go to the extreme of, man, I, you know, this, this failed, I tried to plant stuff, it failed, I can't garden. I give up because every gardener has failure every single gardener I don't care how good they are every one of them goes through failure and that does
doesn't mean that you can't garden. That just means you've got to, okay, this didn't work, learn from it, tweak things, try it again. You know, that there's no perfect gardener out there and there's no gardener, no matter how much experience they have, that they, every time they plant a garden, won't have some sort of hiccup at least or a failure at worst. From, I mean, even, even David the Good has had that. Uh, Steve Solomon, I'm sure, has had that. You can talk to any of them. So it's not cause for panic. And when you go at it with the with the mindset of let's just let's just try it, throw it in, experiment, see what happens. And if it fails, oh well. If it doesn't fail, good. It makes it a lot less stressful. A, a lot less stressful. Trust me, um, because I've been there. I've I've experienced it. So. Yeah, that's kind of just what I want. I had been thinking about doing this video for a little while just because I really want to reiterate that. I really think people need to hear that message and really need to apply that because it will make you a more resilient gardener, um, a more resilient homesteader. You know, So take that, watch the video. Like I said, I'm going to post it in the, in the, in the um, description. You know, and, and whatever you do, don't give up. You know, keep trying things. Um, it will change the way you look at gardening. It will make it a lot more ple a lot a lot more pleasant, a lot more enjoyable, a lot less stressful and um, discouraging. And um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for um, subscribing. And please, if this is your first time watching it, welcome to my channel. Please give it a like comment subscribe share it um, and let's let's continue to grow this and I will be back soon with another update and hopefully next time the you know I won't screw my video up and have to trash it and do a different one so thanks again and have a good day